All right, so I was just thinking about this right now because I think this is going to help somebody. What makes a really good dispute letter? Like, what what are the components that you think makes like a really good dispute letter? You know, get these items removed and things like that. First of all, stating your name, your address, make sure your socials on there, mm. make sure the date is on there. So something I like to do is these credit bureaus they don't give a about you right they yeah. don't care about you they're yeah. in this they're in this to make money right mm -hmm. they get paid from the credit card company to report negative things on your file so it's convenient mm -hmm. for them not to not to disregard your dispute to mm -hmm. so understand right that there is no law that says you have to pay a bill Exactly. On top of that, understand what the 609 is. It's not just a letter that we're sending. It's the law that we're sending, right? So what does the law say? The law says that. Which law? That's on Let, let's talk about FCRA, FDCPA, what we're talking about. Wait, 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 wait. Because I, I be confusing the names. I just know what they say. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to say right, Let's talk about the Fair Credit Reporting Act. I, I go crazy with the consumer laws. So, you know, that's my stuff. Go ahead. Listen, that, that's your stuff. You know, I, so the Fair Credit Reporting Act, it says that anything yeah. that's on your credit profile must be verified and it must be accurate. How yeah. do these people verify this information? Apart from that, in order to have something verified, somebody must be interviewed, right? So if I sit, if I sit here and I say, well, that's Michael's account, right? He fucked, messed up with Chase, right? Mm. I gotta be able to put my name. Lauren Leone is is a um is a witness to that account that Michael messed up. They yeah. don't have anybody that says that. They just go based on what Chase submits. They don't go based on you know how do people nowadays who's going to the bank to get a credit card? I mean, I don't do that. I go on my phone, put my information ready. Right? What yeah. do I need to get a credit card? I need your name, your address, today's date your social, your birthday, right? How did they verify that it was you applying for that credit card at the time and not me with your information? Do you know how many people get their identity stolen every single day? A lot. Right. How many people don't have the name Michael Benjamin? There could be a Michael Benjamin living next door to you with the same birthday you wouldn't even know, would you? Facts. No, you, you wouldn't even know. You would, so how did these people verify this information? Like, how, who did they speak to, right? Because they got to provide you with who they spoke to. Mm -hmm. They go with a system called eOscar. It's an, yeah. there's, a, there's millions of people sending their disputes. Do you honestly think that it's somebody sitting behind the desk and they're like, yeah, this is Michael. This is Michael's dispute letter. Yeah, we're not. Yeah, no, they, just, <laughs> they just put it in the system and they, it matches up with a code and they'd be like, oh, verified. Oh, verified. Oh, verified. Yeah, but how did you verify it? Like, mm. did you did you go out there? Did you who did you speak to to verify this information? Like, give me a name, give me give me something. Same thing with bankruptcy. Oh, we verified your bankruptcy. Oh, because it's public information. But once again, the law states in order for you to have this information, you must have had interviewed somebody that can attest to this information, and you have to have that person's information, the name, the everything, everything. It can't be public record because. How many Lauren Leones they could be out in the world? What if Lauren, uh, me, Lauren Leone, and another Lauren Leone was doing a bankruptcy the same day? And it so happens that it was on the website. Who did you speak to? Because yeah. the court, the court is never going to tell them or verify to any third party for profit companies. Yeah, Lauren Leone has a bankruptcy. Yeah. No. They'll and if you call them, they tell you that right away. So how did you guys, ver oh, you went on a website and you looked up my name and my name happened to be there. And that's how you verified something? <laughs> how do you know that's not somebody else? Yeah, I had this whole conversation with somebody at Experian and he was such an, he was such an, <laughs> he was, let me tell you something, he's such an, that every time I call from the number that I call, it goes directly to the special service. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Yeah, because he was up. He got upset. He got upset when I re reiterate the law, and I had, you know, you have to check. Yeah, they get people. mad when you, you know when you know what you know. Yeah, and I was like, let me tell you something, sir. You just work there, but if you if you know anything about your own personal credit, I'm sure as a human being, you can understand where I'm coming from. 
but he got so nasty on the phone and I, I didn't say, I wasn't cursing him out or nothing. You know, I was having a conversation, but he was, I was like, no, let me tell you something. This, 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 and this, and that's why you got to do what I'm, how did you, who did you speak? He was like, oh, oh, oh. And I was like, exactly, 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 yeah. exactly. And now I'm on the, I, I don't call from that number because every time I call from that number, is this Lauren Leon? Oh, man. <laughs> They hate me at experience. They really do. <laughs> yeah, and I'll be giving them the business too. They they don't like when you know what you know, you know. No, no. Mm -hmm. Oh, you gotta send us a police report. And I was like, no, I don't have to send you shit. Yeah, I don't have to send you shit. Yeah. I was like, I don't, I don't have to send you shit. You should know the laws. Like, come on. Yeah. So I I, I guess for those of y'all listening, definitely understand the FCRA Fair Credit Reporting Act understand the loss i think lauren gave y'all enough confidence if you don't already to know that I they have to go through such a long process to actually yeah. verify so don't just accept like oh verify verify it doesn't it work took, like that let me tell you let me tell you it took me i i removed everything from my credit report in this one account this one account and it was the one that I needed the most, it took me six months to remove it. Because wow. you know, the credit process is 30 to 45 yeah, days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm going back and forth with experience, going back and forth with this period until they gave up. And mm. now my, I'm in the 800s. Mm. I'm in the 800s. Like, I'm I'm chilling. Like, I'm chilling mm. right now. Like, I'm a, I'm in the process of refin refinancing, cashing out my property. I'm buying another one. But okay, nice. Had I had this information when I first started, instead of trial and error and everything, I would be way more advanced than what I'm already at. But it's never too late to learn. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. I don't claim, I do not claim to be the best in credit repair. I just like, I know my stuff. Like I know how to get around certain things yeah. legally, right? Legally. Mm -hmm. And I know the terminology, but it's because I sit there and I read, like I read fine prints now. Because I noticed I was signing my life away um, when I when I was just signing. Like we don't mm -hmm. look at the little the little black. So anybody who's watching this and they're like, "Oh, Credit Karma just offered me a credit card." Make sure mm -hmm. you read that little flag piece that they're telling you because they're what they're telling you is, "Hey, we're sending you, we're marketing to you." Because they tell you straight up, "We're marketing to you." But if you don't get approved, that's your ass. That's not mm -hmm. us. We just get paid from the credit card company. They don't say it like that, but they do tell you, like they do tell you, like we have nothing to do if you if you don't get approved. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, definitely watch out for that. And I hope that y'all can step into confidence moving forward with your dispute Absolutely. and all of that. Yes. Yeah. Let's let's get back on the, the business credit. So how do we get eight million in funding? How does someone even do something so amazing like that? No, it's not. It's not by myself. So you know, I have okay. a rack of clients. It's, it's. I have yeah, a rack yeah, of clients. Oh, you fund it entirely. Yes. Oh, yes. I thought this is all your LLCs. Okay. Okay. I got you. No, no, my LLCs have money. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Let's not, not get it twisted. Not Let's not get it twisted. <laughs> <laughs> I could, I yeah. could, I could, I could, yeah. but no, I help, I help my clients build out their business credit. I help them get funding. I help them basically get the tools to get approved for, remember when you're filling out, um, um, credit card applications, it's not that you're lying, but that you can use projected income. Yeah. Now people That's key. do not confuse my work. Because Lauren, Lauren is not telling you to lie. Mm -hmm. I'm just telling you to use projected income because, all right, let me give you this example. I could win the lottery tomorrow and I could be worth $4 million. Yeah. So why wait till tomorrow and I'm just going to put my $4 million today because I could win the lottery tomorrow. Projected. You're not lying. You're not lying. Just use projected income. Some people be like, oh, Lauren, every time I apply for a credit card, they give me a low limit. They're only giving me 500, 300. And I'm here thinking to myself, okay, well, what are you putting when they ask you what's your annual? If you're putting that you're only making 30,000, why would I give you a, a $20,000 credit card? Yeah. Always use your projective income because you don't know if tomorrow, like I said, you win the lottery or tomorrow you get a bonus. You could find a million dollars on the floor tomorrow. We don't know, right? Yeah. Life, life is a, life is crazy how it works. It is. So 
Yeah, and at, at the end of the day, and I hope I hope Capital One is not watching this. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Love y'all. You know what I'm saying? Chase, my babies. Y'all know how I feel about y'all. You got to do what's best for you when it comes to your credit, mm-hmm. right? Because I know my system and I know how it works. I make sure that it, it, it works to the client's advantage, mm-hmm. not to the bank's advantage. Because the bank's advantage, at the end of the day, the banks take money from the Federal Reserve I know you know your consumer laws and all yeah, that. I don't yeah, want to yeah. get I don't want to get too much into that. Yeah. But I've been, I read up on stuff like that. Everything in life is a scam. Everything in life is a scam. Everything, the bank, everything, everything. You just gotta know which scam works best for you and your family. Mm. And if you want to work with me, you already know at the credit assist. Follow me on Instagram, baby. Oh, definitely. <laughs> Most definitely. <laughs> Most definitely. So do you have like uh because some banks are state of income, right? You know. So you stay your projected. Do you have a certain system that you can like let us know? Two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand, like as far as state income. Is that a thing in a course or something? Do you have to work with you? Um, that, that's something that I do one on one. Okay, gotcha. Okay. That makes sense. Like I said, I don't like to get people in trouble, so I, I gotcha, have a gotcha. way. You know what I'm saying? I know my system, and I and I explain to people how this works, how we're gonna work it out, what Got we're it. going to do. Got it. So if they wanted to work with you, they would just send you a DM. How does that even work? They can book. First and foremost, I got to see what everybody's case is different. What may work for you might not work for somebody else. Right. So some people and I've had people that come to me with excellent credit and I'm here thinking to myself, like, yo, why aren't you building business credit? Oh, because I don't know what type of business to start. Oh, because um, I need to sell something in order to start my business. And I'm like, no, you don't. No, you do not. You need to get your LLC and start building business credit with what you already have. Um, they can book a consultation with me. The link is in my bio. Mm-hmm. They can shoot me a DM if they wanted to work with me. Um, they can text the, the office number 347-754-4667. They can shoot a text. Somebody in the office will get back to them. What are they text? Um, like anything or? They can text, hey, Lauren. I want to uh, book me in for a consultation. We'll, gotcha. we'll provide to you the date, the time, and what the consultation fee is. It's very important that even if you do not work with me, this information is free on YouTube. This information is free on Google. Mm-hmm. Take 15 minutes out of your day and do what you need to do for you and your family. Very mm-hmm. important that you fix your credit. I hope that you don't come back to this podcast and you say, damn. Lauren told me to fix my credit and I didn't do it. <laughs> yeah, no, I'll definitely take action. And I think majority of my listeners take action. So I'm definitely confident they will take action. I want to go back to what you were saying about someone that has good credit, but they don't know what business to start. So let's say someone, they have good personal credit and, you know, they could be put in a position to start a business, but they don't know what to do. You have Airbnb, you have Turo. What do you think is like a good income producing asset to get into? Well, honestly, right now I'm doing the Airbnb. Okay. I have three, I have three units. Nice. Now, let me just state this. I don't know shit about Airbnb. Okay. I don't know. I don't know nothing. Right. Okay. But I do know business. I know how to make my business fluctuate. Right. right. So when I did the Airbnb, I said to myself, okay, if I were staying somewhere, right, what would I need in this household? right? Fresh sheets, toilet paper. I would want to be clean. I'd want um, not a full fridge of groceries or nothing like that, but just the essentials, right? I want to be able to sit. I want to be able to have cups, plates, um, you know, anything that can make me feel at home. So, so far I took that concept and I'm, I'm one of these people that I'm extremely, extremely clean. Like I have OCD when it comes to cleaning. Mm-hmm. Like I'm the type of, uh, I'm the type of girl on Friday. I got the music blasting, got the hair in a bun, got the let me, you know, got the mistoline going on, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I'm like, clean, clean, cleaning is my number one top priority. Like disinfecting is my number one top priority. So I did my units and I said, okay, let me make, I want to make this feel as, as home as possible. And it's mm-hmm. been working out for me. So if you have good credit right now and you have an LLC, yeah, get, start looking around for places that accept corporate leasing. Leasing. Do not make the mistake to take out a lease in your name and think that you're going to be subletting these apartments and that they're not going to find out about it because mm-hmm. you will get kicked out. And that deposit money and the rent that you're paying, 
you're going to lose all of that. Get it in your business name so that they know that there's other people that's going to be coming by. Mm -hmm. My Airbnb is under my business name. Mm. I don't put anything under my name, not at all. And I let them know I'm going to, this is what I'm going to be doing. Cause I don't like to live in fear that, oh my God, if the neighbors find out if the, I like to go to areas where I know they're not going to party. Yeah. Like areas where, where, um, it's going to be like, like, I don't want to say this, this the wrong way. I like Jewish areas. Okay. <laughs> they don't party they they like to come to weddings they like to come to ceremonies they like to be low-key they don't like to you know what i'm saying they're strict yeah. on what they do mm -hmm. so definitely get to know the area like is it don't do downtown atlanta you know everybody likes to party everybody likes to have a event try to get a place where it's more family oriented mm -hmm. that's where my airbnbs are where family weddings not to say that they're not gonna party but they just they don't they don't like too much noise so right. I, I feel i feel better about it like okay i don't have to worry i'm gonna have a whole house party over here and then you know because that could bring you problems and when the neighbors start to complain management is gonna kick you out yeah no definitely and i know some of the listeners that listen to all my episodes a couple episodes ago we had a guest my friend she was, she's like an airbnb expert and y'all are saying some of the similar Thing, so you know it's good confirmation and put i put i let everybody know there's camera right outside yeah i don't play that like look yeah. there's a camera right outside i'm gonna be looking yeah. right at you and you coming up in this house yeah no definitely 